postmodernism is the basis of political correctness. Now, when I say postmodernism, what do you think of? Music, perhaps. Literature, architecture. Maybe the one time you heard it in a high school or college course and you just completely forgot what it meant. Maybe for some of you, the word philosophy comes to mind. Postmodern ideas and philosophy's main purpose was really to take a step back and analyze, specifically to critique society and expand on the idea of critical theory. Now, before I get into the main ideas and details of postmodernist philosophy, I'm going to give you an example of postmodernism that can be found by any one, of, any one of us today, right now. Say we turn on our television at home to a news program, and there's a political debate happening. It's a debate that we've all seen hundreds of times with the arguments that we've all heard hundreds of times with the same two participants that have been in the debate hundreds of times. Now, there's person one and there's person two. They both, they have both been brought together um, to share. And for the rest of the debate, they're just shouting and yelling back and forth at each other with a news anchor there in the middle to act as a mediator. What often happens in these types of situations is that the goal to find out what is or who is ultimately correct um, fades away. To find what is actually the truth fades away. Or to even call out the opposing side on their most controversial claims, which are demonstrably and clearly false. Instead, the participants are just going to do one of two things. They are going to create a straw man argument, or they're going to ignore the other side entirely. Therefore, they're opposing the idea, the mere p possibility that perhaps the other side has something that they can teach us, or perhaps the knowledge that they thought they had is, at least to some degree, incorrect or false. Now, if you're wondering how this represents postmodernism, it's because it shares one of the philosophy's main theories, which is that objective truth is unobtainable. Now, the reason that this is dangerous is because it makes it harder for us to have a conversation if there's no definitive truth that we can strive to find. And while this philosophy has many logical arguments that can be made supporting it, there are also many logical arguments that can be made against it. One of the most popular being that if this philosophy is universally shared by society, it can become extremely unorganized and extremely difficult for people to exchange thoughts and ideas. Um, so now that I've given you one of the main principles, I'm going to move into the main dogma of the philosophy. Now, of the main dogma, there are eight tenets in particular, and they all seem to cover one main theme, which is power. Power of the individual, power of certain groups, and the necessity to have as much power as possible. Of these eight tenets, I find three to be immensely interesting because I find them to be extremely prevalent in our country, um, particularly prevalent in individuals who advocate for the use of political correctness. So I'm going to go over these three with you now. The first one is the rejection of reason meaning that the impulse to express truth in a concrete or in a factual form is impossible um, and is a waste of time to even try and that those who claim to spread truth are individuals who have power and are using these truths as illusory mask to keep their power now for the second one it is the rejection of humanism um, which means that there's no universal humanity and that every culture and every person who's a part of that culture consists of their own reality and perceives reality in their own specific way that will not, cannot, and shall never match anybody else's. Uh, humanism is its own branch of philosophy, philosophy, by the way, and means by definition a philosophical and an ethical stance that emphasizes the value and the agency of human beings. And it generally prefers evidence and critical thinking as opposed to following a set dogma or a superstitious belief. Now finally, the rejection of individual identity, meaning that everybody is 
not an individual. They're just a part of a group. Now, the reason that this is dangerous is it's because it's dividing humans as a unified race and separating them into different positions of different perceptions of reality, different positions of power, and ultimately different truths. And it becomes much more difficult to have a conversation if there's, as I said earlier, no single truth that we can discuss, if there's no point that we can make, and if there's no agreement that can be made between us. Now, those are the three main things that I find being most prevalent in our society today, and I think that they're extremely harmful. Now that I've given these to you, I'm going to move a bit more into examples of this that can be found in our culture, and specifically, postmodernism. Um, okay. I also want to say that if you were to ask me that, what I think of when I hear postmodernism, I would respond with political correctness. And the reason for that is that I find both of them to be the same thing. I find both of them to be centered in power, and I find both of them to answer, emphasize self-censorship. And I also think about how prevalent it is in our society that proper discussion is often ignored or plain, plain, uh, doesn't happen as often as it should be. I think about how prevalent it is that individuals who have a different set of ideas are fought against are not allowed to speak at colleges, at institutions that should be exploring the vast numbers of opinions and ideas found throughout the world, where even people who hold TED Talk-like discussions are criticized and are given bad press simply for inviting somebody of, say, an unpopular political party to speak. Now, as a specific example of where postmodernism and political correctness can be found hurting our society, we can look towards colleges. For example, at the University of, at George Washington University, among with many other schools, it is now, it is now a policy that if a law student finds material to be too triggering, they can discontinue, discontinue a part of a course and discontinue a part of an exam. For example, law students at George Washington University demanded that the school take out the policy that requires them to learn about sexual assault and violent and other violent crimes specifically the laws and the punishments surrounding such crimes. Or another example is a teacher who my family knows personally, who was threatened to be fired after having quoted a historical excerpt during class time. While reading this, this historical excerpt, she said without warning and without censorship, the N-word. After having said this, students jumped online and sent her insulting and threatening emails over social media and was and demanded that she be fired and removed off campus immediately. The faculty didn't take such extreme measures, but they did call her in and say that if she were to repeat this kind of behavior, she would no longer have a job. Making students scared of a word or a topic isn't how you teach. Political correctness isn't teaching us, and it's not correcting us. It's just telling us to shut up, and that's the issue. Political correctness doesn't solely want to eliminate words, but to eliminate ideas. Specifically ideas that people disagree with or that uh, advocates for political correctness disagree with. And it can be most prevalent not only on television or in universities, but just on the street or in a um, classroom at International. For example, if somebody were to meet someone of an opposing party, they would ignore the other side and jump, and jump much too quick to conclusions. For example, if a teacher or if a student were to meet another student who voted for Donald Trump, most likely they're not going to want to have a political discussion. They're not going to want to have a thoughtful and civil exchange of ideas and thoughts. Now, this isn't helping anybody. We're remaining in our own mind and not exploring the vast numbers of possible ideas found um, by other individuals in our world. Now, political correctness is censoring us. It's censoring words that we can use. It's creating shelters and restrictions on ideas that we can express, which to me sounds very Orwellian. Now, political correctness is hurting the lives of educators. It's hurting the lives of students. 
and it isn't getting us any further at solving or addressing certain issues. And I think that it shares some of the most harmful um, principles that are, can be found in postmodernism. Thank you.